Today's episode of Why Everyone Plays is one I've been looking forward to. Even when going through the ones I've done so far, when I think of who had the best combination of circumstances that led to them being so popular, the one who I thought took the cake was Raiden Shogun. Her design, build-up abilities, how she hoisted the electro element on her shoulders after many of us wrote it off as inferior, and even the choice to have her be more involved in the story, albeit more as a set piece than anything else. But regardless, like other widely beloved characters, it's often more than just their gameplay that results in heavy usage of them. Just when I thought Mihoyo couldn't raise the bar any higher, they've done it again. As it stands today, Nahida's first banner in tandem with Yoimiya's second rerun got the highest peak sales in the first day, topping even Venti's day one polls back when Genshin still had the massive wave of hype. So even though she's only been around for a few months, let's make an exception for today and talk about why everyone plays Nahida. Like her peers, a multitude of factors played a role in her meteoric rise to prominence, but she had the advantage of hindsight taking into consideration the few things that didn't work for the others and improved on them to make quite possibly the most flawless execution of a new character I've ever seen. For starters, let's begin with character appeal. Anticipation is an influential vehicle for driving character sales. Oftentimes, it's less about the grand entrance and more about the build-up to it that entices players to go after something. You could drop a masterpiece of a game like Super Mario Odyssey into circulation with no prior advertising, and it's guaranteed to perform worse in early sales than a trash game that was copiously marketed to consumers like Cyberpunk. Check this out! Characters in gacha games operate in a similar way. The reason Kasuha had poor sales despite being one of the best units in the game is because of how abruptly he just showed up. His involvement in the story wouldn't take place until the next version when Inazuma came out. Subsequently, what allowed for the likes of Shogun to have far better initial sales than either Venti or Zhongli is how she was first introduced to us. Not only was she a more prominent character in the Inazuma Archon quest as opposed to Venti and Zhongli who instead served more as silent observers, but they intentionally held off on her banner until version 2.1 despite us being aware of who she was, what she looked like, and her reputation right at the start of version 2. You may recall that Nahida wasn't made playable until version 3.2, a fair amount of time after version 3. However, they spared no effort in disclosing everything else about her. Contrary to the other Archon storylines, Nahida was both an active participant within Sumeru's questline and the focal point of it, giving us ample time to learn more about the kind of personality she has, her worldview, and ultimately develop an attachment to her. And unlike Shogun, who only became a quote-unquote good guy after we broke into her neat headquarters, Nahida was a lovable cinnamon roll right from the get-go. She made us care about her, further increasing the player base's desire to pull for her as we eagerly awaited her banner. Another contributing factor was the element she represented, Dendro. The other six elements were given to us right from the start of version 1, and while that didn't necessarily work against either Zhongli or Shogun's marketability, the novelty of Dendro and its accompanying overpowered reactions only served to increase our expectations that the Dendro Archon, the elder statesman of the element, and theoretically the strongest user of it, would take that aspect even further. That expectation was further compounded by the conservative approach Mihoyo took to releasing Dendro units, only giving us a total of 3 for version 3.0 and 3.1. To be fair, Tignati, DMC, and Kale were all serviceable characters, but they merely gave us a taste of what Dendro was truly capable of. So altogether, you had a double whammy of reasons to go after her. The first was the sheer amount of exposure you had of her throughout the story and the overarching narrative of Sumeru, not to mention how personally involved she was in the events of each chapter. The second was the newfound hype surrounding Dendro and his characters, giving players a very compelling incentive to pull for Nahida, especially when there was so little to work with at that time. Comparatively, even though Shogun had a fantastic maiden voyage, there was already an abundance of Electro characters, forcing her to rely on her in-game strength to make up the difference, and to her credit, she did deliver. But in the end, Nahida's arrival was circumstantially the best out of any character that came before in Genshin Impact, more than Ayaka, more than Shogun, more than Yelan. They could not have built her up any better than they did. At least for me personally, while I'm very fond of all the Archons, as I went through the Sumeru questline, I couldn't help but care about Nahida. Zhongli and Venti were chilling for the most part, and Raiden Shogun and A were complete dicks prior to us beating their ass. They also liked it to make Dendro one of the strongest offensive elements in the game at this point, and Nahida did not disappoint in representing herself as the element's best. To understand why she's insanely overpowered, we first have to break down what makes the elements so overpowered, as the two go hand in hand with each other. Throughout the tail end of version 2, most players have been weaning off the sentiment that amplifying reactions were of a higher caliber than transformative ones. After exhaustive experimentation and exploration of the game's available units and applications, it was discovered that quantity actually does stand a competitive chance against quality, whereas before, those with rapid applications were thought of as weaker than those with a screen nuke. With the advent of Taser, Soup, Freeze, National Teams, etc., reaction span became more commonplace, and Dendro fully internalized that notion by making his two reactions all about spam. And not just any spam, the most efficient kind of spam. 
Quicken is effectively the first reaction in the game to technically not have an internal cooldown, as when you apply the Quicken Aura to a target, you can theoretically apply an infinite number of Electro and or Dendro attacks to said target within the time frame. Coincidentally, Electro was the element all about spam, relying on frequency of application for this source of strength as opposed to Pyro relying on force. As a whole, Quicken was the easier of the two reactions to pull off since you only needed to reapply Dendro onto the target every 6 seconds or so. The other reaction was a bit more difficult to consistently pull off, Bloom. I'm not entirely sure which reaction is the stronger one, since as far as I'm concerned, they're both ridiculously broken. But Bloom appears to be the one players go a lot more for these days, and this is where we encountered a major roadblock with the game's existing Dendro units prior to Nahida. Tignati, Kale, and DMC were all pretty good in their own right, but none of them had a way to abundantly distribute Dendro to everything around them. DMC and Kale were restricted in both frequency and placement, with their only persistent application being rooted in a set location. While Tignati could disperse Dendro freely, but struggled to do so against multiple targets, especially when not clumped up together. What's interesting is, Dendro was already impressing us with its incredible damage output with just those three alone. In other words, it was still very effective despite the lack of consistent application. Nahida would fix all of this. For once, her weapon type was actually a blessing, not a curse. I talked about all the things that made Catalyst painfully mediocre in the past, but that was mostly due to the one virtue that Catalysts have, their normal attacks dealing elemental damage, not being all that attractive given how easy it is to apply Pyro, Hydro, Electro, Animo, Cryo, and Geo. In the case of Dendro, however, a Catalyst user was sorely needed, and who better to put it on than the Archon herself? Nahida's attack animations are among the fastest of her weapon type, and unlike most Catalyst users who attack by throwing a projectile, she projects Dendro in a line in front of her. Catalyst's normal attacks can damage multiple targets if they're close enough, but since projectiles stop on the first target hit, enemies would have to be grouped up very closely to all get hit by one attack. Nahida's area coverage is a bit more generous, and that matters a lot when trying to kill large groups of enemies. Additionally, her elemental skill alone offers way more Dendro application than the three that came before her. All Schemes to Know's hold version has a 360 degree attack radius if you rotate your mouse the whole circle, and its tremendous range at that, although it can only mark up to 8 targets per cast. Aside from the initial damage, any time a marked enemy suffers an elemental reaction or more importantly takes damage from a dendro core, it chains onto other nearby marked enemies, dealing and reapplying another burst of dendro. You can think of it almost like the active component of Raiden Shogun's elemental skill on steroids, where by doing what you were planning on doing, it reapplies dendro onto targets. The cooldown of this ability is only 5 or 6 seconds, but the mark duration is 25, allowing for permanent uptime. The fact that said dentro application is tied to the enemies themselves spares you the hassle of having to aim for a specific mob or even crowd control them, and the reapplication damage is quite strong, scaling off a percentage of both her attack and elemental mastery. Oh yeah, dentro units are EM scalers just like Animo, and like Animo, it's predicated on achieving as many reactions as possible. So not only do you get more damage on Nahida's own abilities, but the elemental mastery stacking makes the reactions stronger too. From just her attacks and skill, Nahida's Dendro application far eclipses any other Dendro unit we have so far, and it's not even a contest. She took the hardest part about Dendro reactions, that is keeping Dendro on every target as often as possible for as long as possible, and made it brain dead easy. Just hold D, spin around like you're doing a 360 no scope, and there you go. I should mention that they were very, very indulgent with Nahida's numbers. Her scaling is beyond absurd, even for a 5 star. Her second passive talent increases the damage and crit rate of Tri-Karma Purification based on her Elemental Mastery, which if you remember, the attack itself scales off Elemental Mastery, so you're basically triple scaling with this attack. Then factor in her ultimate further increasing the efficiency of her skill and you have one of the best elemental skills in the entire game. In terms of her burst, Illusory Heart has a cooldown shorter than its duration, meaning if you can recharge the energy fast enough, Nahida's burst has infinite uptime, so she has two abilities with infinite uptime. Also, the elemental types required to make the shrine work are conveniently the element types you need to pull off Quicken and Bloom, Pyro, Electro, and Hydro. Accessibility and ease of use are two extremely valuable traits to have. Nahida passes both with a near-perfect score. There's probably no one more forgiving and easy to use than her. None of this comes at the cost of power or efficiency either, and to compound that, she likes to share with the class. Her first passive talent gives the active character bonus elemental mastery based on hers, exactly like Sucrose. This character flat out cheats, there's literally no drawbacks to her whatsoever, nothing that gets in the way of her application. Other units might have one or two things that cause them to miss timing or rotation order, but Nahida is unironically idiot proof. You cannot mess up her DPS even if you try. Just press E, press ultimate and you'll garner more success on her than sweaty Eula mains breaking their keyboards for maximum damage. The multi-step nature of Bloom has raised questions on whether it's as good as people make it out to be given that you have to apply Dendro, then Hydro, and then Electro or Pyro in that order. That is if you were specifically aiming for either Hyper Bloom or Burgeon. 
The hard part would then be to reapply those elements on the target after the fact. And this is where Kalei DMC and Tignati face difficulty, but with Nahida's elemental skill reapplying from both elemental reactions and a bloom core explosion, she enables a steady stream of bloom cores, and all of this can be performed regardless of if she's on field or not. By the way, I wasn't kidding when I said Nahida cheats. Let's talk about her constellations, notably her C2. The one thing that gives amplifying reactions an advantage over transformative ones is that since vaporize and melt increase the damage of the triggering attack, set attack benefits from crit chance, hence why someone like Hu Tao can do half a million damage in one hit. Transformative reactions cannot critically strike as they're separate instances of damage, only scaling from elemental mastery and artifact bonuses or passive talents. This is of course done for the sake of balance. It would be absurd if transformative reactions can critically strike with the sheer DPS numbers they have. Oh wait! Her second constellation, the root of all fullness, inflicts a debuff on all targets marked by her skill, causing them to lose 30% of their defense when struck by quicken, aggravate, or spread. If memory serves, 30% defense break is the highest we've seen to date. Most others have only 15 or 20. Honestly, that alone would be good enough for a constellation, but get a load of this. Anytime you score a Burning, Bloom, Hyper Bloom, or Bertrand reaction on those targets, they can crit. A 20% chance to do so at 100% crit damage, so basically the reaction can do double. Granted, it's only Bloom reactions, not aggravate and spread, but yes, Nahida causes selective transformative reactions to crit, and that's every bit as broken as it sounds. You might say with only a 20% crit rate, it doesn't offer a significant enough upgrade to your DPS in the long run for it to make a difference, but taking into consideration how Nahida single-handedly makes Bloom hyper-consistent when it previously wasn't, the numbers add up when you're exploding half a dozen cores every few seconds. Her other constellations are mostly quality of life buffs, but they're conducive to her objective. For example, C1 allows you to get the full power bonus of each element type for only one character, not two opening up the possibility of you getting the max bonus of all three at once. Although most of the time players end up going for just Electro or Hydro, C4 is a nice elemental mastery boost, albeit not worth pulling two extra copies for her in my opinion, and while C6 is good, it's offset by once again the paywall on it. So most players just opt for C2. Admittedly, a huge portion of what made Nahida so popular is that she is indeed overtuned. Her numbers are generous, her properties are useful, and she belongs to one of the best elements in the game at the moment. There are tons of characters who would be used more often if they were just as strong as her. That being said, I feel like it undercuts everything else about her that works so well. Nahida was definitely a step up from the other Archons in terms of how thoughtfully they integrated her both in and out of her gameplay. Archons are meant to serve as the paragon of their element. Therefore, their abilities and playstyle should illustrate what that element is about, and I feel like they sort of missed the mark on that for Shogun and Zhongli. Venti does a decent job demonstrating what makes Animo and Squirrel so amazing, but aside from generating Geo Constructs, I feel like Zhongli took an altogether different path from the other members of his cast. Shogun does project the notion of self-sustainability, something Electro units are all quite good at, but at times, it feels like she's just brute force instead of chaining like how Fischl and Beidou do. Not saying every character has to be homogeneous, but they should be emblematic of their element's properties. Nahida portrays Dendro flawlessly. She's all about making Bloom and Quicken as efficient as it can be, and facilitates that in a way that helps her team achieve it as seamlessly as possible. Outside of Dendro, however, she's out of her elements, no pun intended. But I feel like that's how it should be. Ultimately, Genshin's about mixing and matching elements together, but I believe the Archon should represent the absolute limit of their elements' capabilities, and so far, Nahida is the most impressive rendition of that. I do hope they built on the success of her banner and her development overall and apply that for the other Archons going forward. By extension, it would be nice if every character had the same thought and generosity in numbers, but if they did that, Genshin would power creep very fast. If nothing else, we can laugh at the fact that the strongest of the four playable Archons is a little kid. Let that sink in for a moment. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts on Nahida in the comments down below if you agree or disagree with my points. Aside from that, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, it really helps out the channel. Also, consider following me on Twitter at VarsFram, joining my Discord server, and checking out my other Why Everyone Plays episodes if you haven't yet. But till next time, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon in the next one. Take care.